You know, I, I'm going to try to stay off my soapbox, but I couldn't resist right now. Um, I personally think that 2011 will go down the history books as being probably the biggest year for stem cells. And do any of you know what happened this year that's such a big deal? Peyton what? Peyton Manning. A Peyton Manning? No. <laughs> well, there's, there's Peyton Manning and then uh, a bunch of others like him. No. I, I'm not into anecdotal medicine or, or um, you know, hearsay. I think that's what the lawyers call that is hearsay. Uh, the, the big thing that happened this year is that a stem cell product got approved by a regulatory agency, by the FDA. Did any of you know that? I didn't either. In fact, I was very, very upset that the media never even covered this. Now, it wasn't the U.S. FDA. It was the Korean FDA. But there is a Korean FDA-approved stem cell product on the market right now. And nobody is reporting this. And I'll tell you why I think it's not. It's, first of all, not in the U.S., um, and, and we're a little, you know, ethnocentric or geocentric here. The second is it had nothing controversial about it. There was no embryonic stem cells involved. There, it was not even allogeneic. And I'm very proud to say the first stem cell product that has been approved in the history of the world by a regulatory body has been an autologous stem cell product. And I think we should give the Koreans a, a, a applaud. Um, now, it was not Dr. Cha's company. It was one of his uh, other companies in Korea. But in July of this year, um, the Korean FDA approved autologous bone marrow derived stem cells for acute MI. And I think that's a landmark. It's a huge landmark. And I'm so happy that it was an autologous cell because that's really what this meeting's about. Most of you here who are here are probably are interested in using your own stem cells uh, either to treat disease or aging. And so with that in mind, um, this talk is going to be primarily limited to autologous. Uh, I'm not against allogeneic. In fact, I think it's a great idea. I'm not against embryonic either. Uh, I, I personally think may the best cell win. But with that in mind, it's clear that autologous is the safest thing, and we should be using these now. So I'm going to talk about clinical trials. I'm going to talk a little bit about clinical use, who's doing what. Um, unfortunately, this was too broad of a subject to go over everything overseas, so I'm, I'm skipping a lot there. In fact, I'm having to skip a lot of diseases as well. But I'm going to try to talk about things by cell type, by country, and by, by disease. This is a laundry list of all the different diseases that have already been treated in some type of a clinical trial um, for with stem cells. Um, most of you have probably seen a picture like this before. This is a, however, a very uh, cool picture that you'll very you won't see very often. What this actually is is a stem cell leaving the bone marrow in response to a cytokine that has stimulated it to leave the bone marrow. And this is really what is so amazing about bone marrow stem cells. There's actually four types of stem cells in the bone marrow. Uh, we already talked about these earlier, so I'm not gonna spend a lot. Here are all the diseases that have already been treated, uh, either in a uh, randomized clinical trial or in a uh, open label study uh, with these four types. As you can see by far, the most common stem cell type from bone marrow is the MSC, but the hematopoietic ones have been used for Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, uh, anemia, cutaneous repair as well. And the V cell uh, were just discovered in 2008, and for that reason, this list is very, very short under V cells. MSCs were discovered way back in the late 1980s, and that's really why that list is so long. Now, I'm starting with bone marrow-derived MSCs because they clearly have been studied the most. There's been over 123 clinical trials done. There's over 30 clinics overseas that you can go get these outside of a clinical trial. There's at least five places that I know of that are using them in the U.S. Now, here is a uh, tabulation from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine of all the clinical trials currently being done with MSCs, and as you can see, 
Uh, by far, the, the most common reason for these is heart disease um, and um, immune and neuroregenerative things. Here is these same clinical trials uh, listed by how far they are along. And these, again, only include uh, the ones, to my knowledge, uh, that are listed in clinicaltrials.gov. There are clinical trials that never make it to that registry, okay? Uh, I'm going to spend the most time talking about um, stem cells for heart disease because this is the area that's been studied the best. Now, the first stem cell treatment for heart disease in humans actually occurred in May of 2001. That was not that long ago. And in July of this year, the Korean FDA approved the first autologous uh, stem cell product for any disease, and to my knowledge, in the history of the world. Now, there is uh, one exception to that, a, a product in the U.S. that was approved um, primarily, I believe, for the military. But, but this is the one that's basically been approved for heart disease, and it's for acute MI. Um, and this is an autologous bone marrow product. Now, I want to talk real briefly about the two main indications for um, using this. And this really brings up a lot of important issues like, is culturing important? How many cells do you need? Timing, treatment windows, all of those things. For instance, I think all of us understand that if you're going to use stem cells for a heart attack, you've got a treatment window. And most experts in this will say the treatment window is not the time of the heart attack, but about five to seven days later. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how those numbers came up, but there were a lot of animal studies that did that supported that. Uh, giving it before that has a lot of side effects. Giving it later is not as effective. A heart failure, on the other hand, there is no urgency. There's no treatment window. Uh, an ideal time. What this means then is for acute MI, you really don't have time to culture autologous stem cells, whereas with heart failure, you have as much time as you need. Uh, time is no issue. With acute MI, autologous stem cells really are only practical to be used fresh because you need them in five days, whereas with heart failure, fresh or frozen really uh, are fine and autologous or allogenetic are fine. Now, here is where, unfortunately, I think that the allogeneic crowd are going to get an advantage. They don't now because their products are not approved yet. But sooner or later, there's going to be a cultured allogeneic company that's going to come up with an off-the-shelf product. And the advantage of this, clearly, is that they're already cultured, and these cells do not have to be harvested at the time of MI. With heart failure, though, I think that autologous clearly has some advantages uh, because, again, time is not of the essence. So, I, again, here the key issue that I want to bring out is that culturing gives you a more appropriate dose. And this has always been a problem with fresh use of stem cells. If you don't get enough dosage, you're really practicing homeopathy with stem cells.